I own a 2010 Sprinter van and I love my van. There's just one problem and that's rust. She has rust on lots of places and there are two spots that I've ignored. I kind of discovered it in Spain somewhere and then I figured, oh, look at it when I get back. And yeah, I should actually start looking at it and I waited until I got the little knobby things. I needed these little pluggy things because if I take the black parts of the side of the car and I break some of these, I wouldn't be able to put it back on. So I waited until I got those. I've got those. So I'm technically ready to take the thing off. Don't know what's under there. Once I take those off and I start breaking little pieces of rust off, I'm going to see what the end result will be. What I want to know is if I grind that piece out myself and try and reconstruct it or have somebody weld in a piece, will that work? Or is it like a very big job? The only way I can figure out is to take off the black side piece stuff thingy. So let's go do that. Yeah, okay, that's one. Yeah, what's that? That's weird. What's this? What is that? Okay. This is not gonna be good, guys. I'm trying to postpone it for as long as possible. I need to know what's happening. Okay, so the bottom is now. I want to go from that side over here because here's the most rust. So I don't want to be putting the least force on there because I do would like to be able to put it back on because if I have to drive around without this on with all this rust here, it's not going to be good. Okay. Okay. What is that? Oh my god. How is that? Water can get behind here, right? I'm seeing my insulation. <laughs> then I'm going to you know, hitting myself in the face. Dick. Dick. Okay. Ooh. Oh, okay. It might not even be that bad. A little bit. It's just this part, I'm breaking it. Oh, it's so bad. How can you do that? Can I twist it? Oh, that's how that works. Okay. Okay, let's see. So this is the only one that stayed in here. Oh, I cut my finger. Okay. Where the hell did I cut my finger up? I cut my finger. Oh yeah, it's all super sharp. Okay, so guys, wear gloves. Okay. Okay, anyway. This, this is my insulation. So I would like these sort of plugs. These things were on here, but they have all dissolved. So I should get them different. Are you okay, finger? Sort of. Okay, so this part is still pretty okay, but this part is horrible. This is where all the rust is. So this is a part that holds this thing up. But I was thinking if I get it fixed now, they might still be able to salvage this part. Because I thought that they probably have to grind out this entire thing and then that part. It might not be that bad going up to here though. That's the inside of the van. But this part, this entire part, is just breaking. So, 
so I don't know what I should do, but I'm gonna Google it because I can take it to a person. I can also try and fix it myself. I'm gonna be cutting my car apart. Like, is that something I wanna be doing myself? Do I? I don't think so. But I can also not have my car sit somewhere for like a week. I live in her. <laughs> like, dilemma. What I should do, yeah, you know what I should do? Yeah, that would be good. I have to find a prop, I have to find a place near my parents' house where I can bring it. And then I'll just take some time off and go to Iceland or something, and when I get back, she'll be all done. Yeah. Let's just do it like that. I just really want to take this part off. I'll just have to go on a holiday. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Are you on? Good enough. So it's not looking good, but I expected it to be worse. That's not a good thing to say, maybe, but I thought that if I would take off those caps, I don't know what the Dutch the Dutch word is stootkappen, I think. Or schleitkappen, anyway. I expected it to be worse back there, but it's not because that's the part that's on the inside of the van. So the other part is on the inside, the back of it. And then the part that's rusty is the part that is in the wheel case. Is that the word? So I don't think I'll be doing that myself. I think that it needs to go to a shop where they can take off the wheel and they can put it on a is the bridge the right word? A car bridge? Is that the Dutch word is brug? I don't know what the the American or English word is for the thing that lifts up your car. And then they can just look at it, grind it. I don't know what they're gonna do, but they have to. I think they have to take out an entire piece, and then weld something back in. And I was looking at it from the inside of the wheel thingy, and then I thought, you know what? I'll just look at it next year. And then I thought, no, because I've already ignored this problem for a long time and I might be staying in the Netherlands through the winter or Belgium through the winter and it's only gonna get worse and now it's only behind that thing behind the black thing so if they would weld it and make sure it's it's looking okay and it's not gonna rust and it's painted in the right color then it doesn't really matter what it's looking like because it's going to be behind the black thing. But if I don't do it and it's going to get worse and worse and worse and it's going to come through, then it's going to be a harder job to get it looking nice. Okay, so I am going to look up companies that are close and I'm going to call them and see it, what I'm going to ask for an estimate in price. I'm going to be in Zutemir next week so I could come by, make an appointment, go by there and have them check it out and have them look at what the cost would be. Now, the sad thing is that I also have rust in my back door and on my side door, but I don't care because I just said, because if I would fail in the end, I can get a new door. It doesn't feel like that big of a deal because you can just try and mend it and do it. And after a while you can buy a new door. That rust is actually eating itself into my house. I cannot replace that part. It's not like a part that you can just screw off and put back in. It needs to be welded by a professional. So... I am going to look into that. If that repair would be around 3,000 euros, we are <laughs> doing a DIY. D Do it yourself. DIY. If it's going to be less than that, <laughs> I'm going to have it professionally fixed. And then what I would also like to have is I have the black caps going like that. And then this part is not 
black and then that part is black again only horizontally in one straight line and you can also get these caps to go over the wheelbarrow thing if they're gonna fix it and it's gonna look all fancy or it's gonna be like there's gonna be no more rust i'm going to ask them to get holes in there or however you attach that i'm going to get the black thing over it so then one they don't have to make it look as fancy as they would need to if you have it shown and two it'll protect it a little bit more from stones or whatever whatever is gonna be there so i'm just gonna call some people right now this issue oh, I'm a little bit upset because it's gonna make the search way harder I just contacted the garage that I always bring my van to for my MOT for my service everything I trust them so good because they don't treat me like a woman that has no idea what she's doing a lot of other places, I've been like bamboozled that they're that you bring your car there with my previous cars, and they would be like, "Hello, yeah, we checked your car for the MOT, and you have like fifteen hundred euro repairs." And I would be like, "What?" And then my dad would go there to go get it, and then they would say, "Yeah, no, actually," because then he would ask like, "Wait, what's going on? Why is this twelve hundred euro car having fifteen hundred euro repairs?" It was a different car that I had. And then they would be like, oh, no, no, it's not. No, we didn't mean it like that. No, she might need to do this and this and that. And then it was just 200 euros. They would fix it. I'll be fine. So I do not trust the people in that industry. And I have a garage that I trust very, very well. And I just decided to contact them and ask them, hey, what company do you recommend? And they said, go to these guys. I call these guys and I ask them like, hey, can I come, come around? Can I have, um, can you check it out for me and give me an estimate on the price? And then he said, how big is your car? And I was like, oh, it's a sprinter van. He was like, how big? I was like, it's a uh, height two, length two, but it has a max air fan on top. And he said, I won't be able to fit you in. <gasps> you know what I'm thinking? No. Oh, I just had a thought. Sorry for shouting. I thought I can take the max airfan off. I can unscrew it from the top. I just have to leave the thingy on. But I said, how high is, is the... It's for spraying the, the thing. It's for spraying the... Doing the spraying. The paint. So I said, how high can it be? Do I need to measure? Like, how how much space is there? And he said none it's just two is the max we can fit it doesn't get any higher than that so i was like oh and i just thought i can take it off but he, like the solar panels are still on there and it's gonna be like this much higher anyway so it won't work but um he said um he said it won't fit and i was like can you can you fix it and then give it to me on spray paint he was like no i can't and uh, i said can we take the air out of the tires <laughs> said no i thought maybe we can lower the van i don't know and he said no and i said do you recommend any other companies and he said no <laughs> and he also said i have no idea who would have a bigger spray thing than that and i thought it was just gonna be me trying to figure out which ones are good and gonna give me a good price estimate i didn't think that People were gonna... I, I didn't think that the van was gonna be too big. Uh, 
So I thought, oh, I got this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> okay. I'm going to Google and see if I can find anybody else. Because, like, there's tons of these vans riding around in the Netherlands because they're used for, like, mail and like, for mail packaging. How do you say it? Like, I mean, like delivery people. I can't find the word. And, like, all of these other companies that have those. So, like, there are people that can fix this, but... Frick! Okay, let's go find out how to fix this. Okay, so, luck, sort of luck, hopefully luck. Um, I called a couple of them, a couple of them were like, we don't do that, and others were like, it's too uh, low, and then I found a, uh, a person, f uh, I don't know, uh, they, they sounded very uh, uh, from Den Haag, which is going to be fun. He told me that I can come by, have it checked out. He says that he already has a sprinter van standing there. He said that the only thing is that they cannot spray the roof. But they don't have to spray the roof. So I said, that's okay, you don't have to spray that. So he can see me, I'll go there. So I was looking at my agenda thinking like, in my calendar, thinking like, when will I be able to go there and see? Because I have like a dentist appointment and I have another appointment at the doctor and stuff like that. And then I saw in my calendar that uh, I won't be there like the 1st of November. But okay, I maybe next week on Tuesday I'll drive back and forth to have them check it out. Because I want to know if they can do it. I want to set a date to do it. And otherwise I'll just do it the 1st of November. But I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, combine it with something else. But maybe I'll just go and hang out with my parents. And um, it's too bad because I was going to go to my parents' house today. But I decided I was too tired and wouldn't do it. And now I'm like, it's too late to drive there. And uh, I think it's a good plan to bring the van to the guys, have them check it out and have them estimate the price, then have them fix it. And then when they're fixing it, I won't be having a house. I can go on a trip. Oh no, I wanted to go to Iceland, but it's so cold at the moment in Iceland. If they're going to be fixing my van, like maybe November, December, maybe even January, it's going to be too cold. I would like to go to Australia. That's too far away though. I don't have any <laughs> money to get there. Oh, then all my money will be gone. But like I'm thinking maybe I'll go have a little trip somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, the first things first. I can also stay at my parents' house. But I don't want to be staying there for like four days. Because I can imagine that it... Why is my fan go? I can imagine that it takes a couple of days to have it fixed. I don't know. Like they have to grind it out, fix it, weld it, fix it, make it nice, spray it, dry, spray it, dry. I think it's got to take like a week or so. I don't know. I'll do all the preparations I can, of course. But like, I don't know. Okay, anyway, that's the update on that. We'll just have to wait and see what the future will bring. So, never a dull moment on a farm. I was getting a pumpkin for my dog so I could make them some pumpkin. Because I recently discovered they can have those and they like it. And then he found this tiny little baby. But the thing is, I can't find its parents anywhere. Well, it's mom. I don't really care about the dad because he won't take care of it. But... Baby... And it was really cold. I walked around for like half an hour over the farm 
trying to find the mom and the babies. I can't find them anywhere, but it's getting dark. It's getting cold. It's evening now, and it was super cold. So tonight we're doing a last round. We're gonna try and find the mom and the and the uh, brothers and sisters, siblings. For now, I have this tiny little baby. I'm going to keep it warm here, and then later we're gonna look for the mom. Is this the start of van life with chicks? I hope not, because if it's a rooster, that's not gonna work, but. Look how cute he is. Yeah, baby. Sachis. Gento. Nay. Nay, Bobby. Nene. Just put him in the little thing over here. But he wants his mommy. Or she, I don't know. It's a very loud chick. It's very feisty. It was flying. So, I mean, it's a healthy chick. So, just recently couldn't find its mom. Like, just. But they were feeding the goats. So, they were all walking around. And in a while, they're all going to be settled and chilling out. And I can see where she is. I can't. I couldn't find her. But the cats were hearing her and or the, the chick and they're gonna come running for it so um yeah it's staying safe here for now and then a couple of hours we're gonna see oh it's fine we're gonna see where where its mom is so just as i was about to cook the pumpkin and try and put on the heat he came out of his little thingy and i figured oh that's not safe there's gonna be fire next to his escape route so I swaddled it because on TikTok there's this really nice lady who's a nurse, a baby nurse. I don't know what that, what that's called. And she has indoor cats that she calls her little fluffy chickens. She calls them indoor cats, indoor kitties. And uh, she has this thing of does it swaddle or does he swaddle or does she swaddle? So I decided to swaddle the baby and put it in here so it's warm and it can hear me but it's not very happy at the moment but i thought if it is swaddled it maybe relaxes but it's like mommy where are you mommy so i'm gonna get the pumpkin ready for the dogs and then oh i'm gonna go outside and try and find the mommy so to answer the question does it swaddle this little tiny baby does indeed swaddle Okay, tiny fella. Do you feel safe? Mm. Cover you up. So I, I got the pumpkin ready. It's actually quite a lot, so I'm saving the rest for tomorrow. And I'm going to let it cool because it's warm. Oh, it's cooling already. And then we're going to give it to the dogs. And then we're going to go and see if we can find the mommy. Because there has to be a mommy somewhere. I just need to know where she is. I got my headlamp, my head torch. So that we can see outside because it is getting dark. Is it warm? No, it's okay.
Baby, it's cold. Oh, dark outside, I want to say. Anyway, we are heading out to try and find the mommy with the siblings because where is she? We need to go find the mommy. Right down Santa Claus Lake. Hello, kitty cat. What are you doing here? Is there a mommy in here? No. Look in here. Nor in there. Where are they? She's under here. I didn't see that there's a hole there. She's under there. They're reunited. Yay, he's reunited with his family. And I didn't get it on video because I was looking around and my friend, my colleague who was helping me, had uh, the, the chick in his hand. And he was also walking around and looking on their places where he knows that there can be a nest so that they hide out there for the night. And... <laughs> All of a sudden, he yelled, she's over here! And I saw him get pecked by a chicken. And so he put the baby on the floor and he immediately ran to her. Because we also found a white chicken, but he didn't respond to her. She was just sitting on eggs. Um, how do you say that? Sitting on eggs? No. <laughs> so I'm really happy I kept the chick safe from um, the cats and... I waited for my colleague to get back and he did his final rounds and he was like, oh, I think I know where she is. And he helped me, so I'm very happy about that. So thank you, Dennis, for helping me. And uh, yeah, so he's back. So tomorrow morning I'm going to go and see if I can find her with her chicks so that you can have a video of him reunited with his family because he tried to video it, but she's under a little stair, so you can't really see her. But yeah, I'm really happy that that worked out fine because I was already Googling, like, where can I get chicken feed? And But I'm allergic to hay and all sorts of stuff and birds. So uh, having living in a van in a cold season with a chick is going to be a hassle. But I was going to make it work. But uh, swaddling a chicken, yeah, that works. Thank you. I think her name is Jen Hamilton. Thank you, Jen. For <laughs> it shut up the little chick because he kept squeaking and he it warmed him up and he was all cozy anyway all's good now i'm gonna hit the hay <laughs>